So far, we've talked about training and using individual models, but there's a whole class of uh, approaches that involve uh, the use of multiple models at once. So one example of our individual models are our decision trees. Uh, the learning algorithm is relatively uh, simple. Uh, the decision trees, as we've seen, have both classification and regression forms. And in the case of classification, our decision trees can handle more than two classes very naturally. Whereas for a lot of our decision surface approaches, we actually had to uh, create multiple models in, in order to handle that k is greater than two uh, case. The decision trees are also advantageous from the perspective of uh, our human experts. This naturally gives them a sense of the, what the decision tree is actually doing. So they can actually read the individual questions and uh, confirm that uh, the tree is doing something that uh, is, is actually something akin to what the experts might be doing. Decision trees, though, present lots of challenges. Uh, for, for the trees that we've been studying and for most algorithms that are out there, the splits are done based on individual features, and these are generally uh, access-aligned uh, features. Decision trees, though, come with a variety of challenges. So for the algorithms that we've been studying, and this is true for most algorithms that are out there, the splits are done based on individual features. So that means that we're uh, creating these axis aligned uh, decision boundaries uh, in the feature space. These boundaries are also uh, quite crisp. And in particular, the model is going to change what its output is based on exactly where one falls relative to the line. And a small epsilon change will potentially dramatically change what the uh, output answer is. In the case of uh, our regression trees that we've been studying, these are piecewise constant functions, and uh, flipping over the line means that the output could be even changing quite dramatically. If we want to capture very complex models, we need to actually have a very deep tree. And uh, what a deep tree means is that uh, for an individual leaf node, we have very few samples that are actually have actually fallen down into that uh, that leaf. Uh, and what that means is that we don't necessarily have a, a statistically significant uh, amount of information to make good decisions about what the output ought to be. And, and so this means that our trees tend to be fairly brittle when we ask them to uh, generalize to new scenarios. So I'm going to tell a couple of stories about, uh, about taking the step into ensembles. Uh, Sir Francis Galton uh, he uh, was really a polymath. He uh, did work in lots of different areas. He was uh, one of the first to start drawing weather maps. He worked in this area of regression. He, he's played with psychology, heredity, and a whole variety of different uh, science uh, areas. And uh, at one point in time, he uh, went to a, a, a fair and one of the things that the participants could do is go to this event and uh, they led this cow out into this uh, arena and everybody got a chance to guess what the weight of the cow was. And the, the game was that uh, everybody got to submit these guesses and whoever was closest to the true weight of the cow would actually uh, win the game. And what Sir Francis Galton actually uh, was able to do was convince the organizers to give him the all of the slips of papers that that the uh, that the guesses were written on, and and he assumed that in general these non-experts would generally not do very well at all, and uh, but and, and and this turned out to be the case with the data. So so in general. Uh, there was very high variance in, in what the guesses were. However, the distribution of all of the guesses was something uh, of, that was approximately normal. And, and it turned out that the mean of all of these guesses turned out to be really close to the true weight of the cow. So the, the idea here then is that measures from a large set of uh, independent uh, predictors, as poor as they might be, can actually give us a high quality prediction. And so this is the idea behind our ensemble uh, method. So, so we create many different models. 
and uh, and then we combine these uh, the the predictions that are made by these models in some way. If we're dealing with class classifiers, we might have uh, some sort of voting uh, mechanism. If we're dealing with regression, we have to have some way of blending the different predictions and, and computing a mean as Galton did. Uh, that that is a reasonable way to uh, blend these together. Let me give you one other example that was published just a few years ago. So this is the problem of uh, looking at uh, slices. Uh, from uh, breast tumors and trying to make a decision as to whether or not uh, the uh, tumor is benign or malignant. Now, medical students train for years to be able to uh, do this task well, uh, and Levinson uh, and crew, they were uh, interested in the question of whether or not they could take non-experts and teach them to uh, distinguish uh, between these two different classes. And so this is exactly what they did. They brought in something on the order of about 20 different individuals and uh, trained them to provide class labels to various images. So they'd be presented with a pair of images and, uh, and if uh, the answer that was given by an individual was correct, they were told so, and otherwise they, they were told that they were incorrect. And it turns out that after just a couple of weeks of training, these non-experts could actually classify the images with a very high accuracy. That was pretty impressive in and of itself. But if we engage then in a voting scheme where we're combining what these uh, individual experts were uh, saying in terms of their predictions, we can actually do even better. So this is, this is what uh, Levinson uh, tried. And uh, their particular approach was a hard voting uh, type uh, classifier where they just tallied the votes for malignant versus benign and then that was the the one that had the highest number of votes was considered the uh, the winner uh, as far as the ensemble of uh, individuals was concerned and it turns out the uh, accuracy increased to 99 percent and then this is uh, quite impressive especially given that these are uh, non-experts so this hard voting classifier type of an idea uh, the, this improvement in performance requires in, independence of the, uh, of the different individuals. And, and when that independence assumption is adhered to, then the law of large numbers says that uh, combining a, a large number of uh, samples from a random variable can give us the correct answer with high probability. And finally, the punchline to this particular paper was that these individuals were not human and actually were uh, uh, pigeons. And so that's even uh, more impressive. All right, so let's start to nail down this idea of uh, ensemble predictions. So we're going to train up a set of independent classifiers. The, these different models can can uh, be different types of uh, classifiers. So we can bring in a decision tree, we can do uh, have one be a logistic regression, we can have a support vector machine, et cetera. And, and because these models are quite different in the way that they st structure their decision process, they can actually capture different uh, trends in the, uh, in the data set that we're faced with. And then in, in the context of classification, then uh, we can uh, do a voting uh, type of a, an approach. For hard voting, we've already talked about that, where we just count up the votes for the different classes, and the, the majority class is the one that, that wins. Uh, we can also d take a soft voting approach. So this is the context where, where our uh, different classifiers produce not a single class label, but actually give us a probability distribution. And in this scenario, the uh, approach is to just average those probability distributions and then select the class with the highest uh, probability. All right, so that, that's the outline of the uh, general idea. And uh, we're gonna play with a little bit of code here, and then we'll start to uh, talk about some deeper ideas, especially around decision trees.